console log is something that we probably use on a daily basis. And this is what it usually looks like. We open up our coding interface, pass in a string or a variable, and we think we're pretty much amazing. But there's so much more to console log than just parsing out a string or showing a variable. How many of you have actually taken the time to really learn how to best take advantage of using the console log to display data in tables or groups or with styling? If you're applying for jobs or even working with coworkers, they're gonna love the fact that your console logs look absolutely brilliant. And maybe it's a skill you can teach them too. So you best learn these and your future self will thank you. And so will I after you hit that like and subscribe button. Let's begin. Our first example is using console.table. This actually displays the content in a table, so we can pass in row one, row two, row three, with strings and numbers and even longer strings. And this will display them neatly when you run them in Node.js or even in a Chrome browser. If you're writing front-end code, we can copy paste this into a Chrome debugger just to see what it looks like. It's more or less the same in terms of VS Code in its console as well as in Chrome and its debugging tool. But just be aware that if, for example, you're nesting objects inside of other objects, the layout for these will be slightly different. Next, I want to take a look at console.group, which is an effective way to group similar bits of information together. And it also allows you to collapse or expand different fields as well. I'll start with a console.group group. Here I'll put in a title of URL info. The rest can be indented with regular console logs such as adding in the protocol of window.location.protocol as well as maybe some other ones such as the host which can be windows.origin and also the path. Now we're going to define a console.group collapsed. This will be the metadata, and it's essentially a group inside of a group that can be expanded and collapsed at any point in time. For the metadata, we're gonna to continue to console log out information. We'll indent this a little bit more so we can visually see its collapsed group, and here we'll pass in the date, operating system, browser, and finally finish this group with a console.group end. Since we've technically made two groups, we'll need to add in one more console.group end to close out the entire statement. What we now have is a basic structure of what this should look like in the browser. Let's test this out. I've pasted this into the Chrome debugger. I've hit enter and we've got our information. Here it's nicely labeled and grouped. We've got the URL info, which we can collapse as expand. We can view the metadata, which is automatically collapsed, but it's available there if we wanted to see that too. You may not know this, but you can actually style console logs as well. Styling it allows you to apply different colors and fonts, and it makes it for a more readable experience. Let's have a look at how this is possible. Let's start off with an example for the terminal inside of VS Code. We're gonna pass in U001B with the number 32 here, and this is gonna turn the text into a green text. Then we're gonna close that statement off. I know this looks odd, but in terms of running this in a terminal, we will get green text. There's a full article on VS Code if you guys wanna learn about all the different numbers and standards that you can create in terms of backend code, and you can find this just over here. It works with VS Code 2021, which I assume most of us are using. We can change the text, or we can change the background color, or we can even pull in some of the examples and resets here to define however we want the terminal to look when we print out console logs. But this is backend code. Let's have a look at some front-end code now. I'm back here inside of the debugger of Chrome, and I want to do a hello world. But before I do that, I'm going to pass in a percentage with the C. This will kick off the styling I want. Now I can pass in one more value here, which is color. Now the color I've done is pink, and it's come out with pink text. It's applied it to the line above. We can also apply other styling, basically like CSS, such as text decoration with underline, or even changing the size of the font itself to something ridiculously large, like font size 48. This next one is kind of interesting. It's called console assert, and it's a way to log out errors in, for example, a looping statement. Let's take a look. Here, we'll start off with a regular error message as a constant. The error message will say that the number isn't even. We're gonna pass in a for loop, and this is gonna run through a number of numbers. We're gonna start with the number two. We're gonna make sure that we check that the numbers are less than or equal to five, and we're gonna increment the number. Then we're gonna console out the number, and then we're gonna run a console.assert. This is the new type of console here. We're gonna check the number is divisible by two, and if not, we're gonna pass that across calling the error message. 
this should essentially go through and I'll loop through this for statement and basically pass through when a number is not even and run this assertion. This assertion will come back with a fail and giving us a prompt exactly what number has appeared that wasn't even and it'll mark it out as an error that we can check back later on. As you can tell, there are many different types of ways to console, but these are just some of the few more interesting ones. There's a full article on this, which you can check out in the link in the description. Otherwise, don't forget to like, and I'll see you in the next one.